What's up everyone? So lately I've been getting a lot of messages requesting me to do a gaming PC under 200 bucks. Well, the issue with making a gaming computer that cheap is that you usually have to find very good deals and said deals are usually not available to everybody and if they are, they don't last very long. So for the past month, I went on a visionary quest trying to figure out if you can actually build a $200 gaming computer or less that can apply to almost anybody. Now the result of said visionary request is what I like to call the Ozbox. Now I do not own any of the components that come with the Ozbox, but it was kind of my idea to put it all together and so I kind of trademarked it with that name. Now this is an entry level gaming computer that almost anyone can build. If you're in the US then you can definitely build this, but it might be a little bit harder if you're outside of that region. Now the computer is more or less an upgraded pre-built machine. It's an HP Compact 6000 Pro with an upgraded CPU and an installed dedicated graphics card. The good thing about this is that the pre-built is actually only $50 shipped and it comes with pretty good components. It comes with a Core 2 Duo, four gigs of DDR3 memory, a 250 gigabyte hard drive, a keyboard and a mouse, and built-in speakers. On top of that, it also has a Windows 7 COA, so as far as I'm concerned, you can also install the operating system free of charge. So I decided to match the HP Compact Pro with the 750Ti for 110 bucks. Now, if you combine the pre-built machine for 50 bucks and then this video card for 110, it is 160 for the baseline model of the Ozbox. Now, MSI did just announce a low profile 1050 and 1050 Ti, and it's expected to be about 120 to 150. So if you wanna get those instead of the 750 Ti when they come out, you can definitely do that instead. Like I mentioned, for 160 bucks, you get a pretty awesome entry level gaming PC slash HT PC. Now for another 15 to 20, you can upgrade the CPU to a quad core processor, and I will show you the list of the supported processors of the HP Compact 6000 Pro on screen now. The Compact also supports up to 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory clocked at 1333 megahertz. So if you want to upgrade that, you can also do that as well. Now I will go over how I actually put the odds box together because it's not as cut and dry as one may think. But if you want to skip all of that and just see the benchmarks, then you can go ahead and skip ahead. I have benchmarks of the Core 2 Duo Ozbox with 4 gigs of RAM and then the Core 2 Quad Ozbox with 4 gigs of RAM. So first things first, hook up your HP to a monitor and see if it's functional. If you make it to the Linux Mint language screen, then you're good to go. Now grab the 750Ti. It should come with a low profile bracket because the one that it comes with, the default one, is actually too long for the HP Compact. So we have to take that off and install the new one. What you'll need are a pair of pliers or really strong fingers and then a Phillips screwdriver. So use the pliers to unscrew the bolts that are by the DVI port. Once they're kind of loose, then you can use your fingers to unscrew them off the entire way. After that, use your Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew the rest of the screws. Now take your low profile bracket and then line it up with your screw holes and your display ports. Screw everything into its respective position. I actually find that it's easiest to do this if you stand your GPU upright. Great, now you're ready to install the GPU. So unscrew any screws on the side panel and then lift up the flap on the side panel until it comes off. At the bottom right of the case, you should see a bright green arrow. Pull up on that until it unlatches and then take out the two middle metal fittings. There should be four and you're gonna take out the two middle ones. After you're done doing that, you're ready to install your GPU. Just pop it into the PCIe slot and then you're good to go. So if you're not installing a new CPU, then congrats, you have yourself an Ozbox for 160 bucks. But if you are installing a new CPU and you're not really sure how, then continue watching. So what you have to do is unplug the four pin power connector for the CPU. It should be located on the bottom left of the motherboard. After doing that, take out the black plastic shroud that's covering the CPU heatsink. After doing that, make sure you unscrew the CPU cooler at each of its four points, and I recommend using a flathead screwdriver for this. I found that to be the most easiest. Most easiest. The easiest. Just the easiest. I found it to be the most... I found it to be the easiest. It's the easiest. Take out the old CPU and install the new one. Make sure you apply thermal paste and reinstall the CPU heatsink and the black plastic shroud. Close your case, install Windows, boot it up, and play games to your heart's desire. So that's it, you have yourself an Ozbox. Now I'm sure most of you want to see the benchmarks, so I won't keep them from you any longer. Uh, let's just roll the reel.
So as you can see, both of them are 1080p capable, but the quad core variant more so than the dual core variant. I will say with games like GTA 5, the dual core was very glitchy and very sluggish and had very, very, very slow loading times. So if you do plan to play GTA 5, then at least get yourself a quad core CPU for this Ozbox. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you found it helpful, or if you know somebody who really wants to build a gaming computer for kind of cheap, then share this video with them. Also, if you're thinking about building your own Ozbox, then definitely tweet at me and use the hashtag Ozbox because I really want to see you guys' creations. Other than that, I hope you guys had a fantastic Thanksgiving and a fantastic Thanksgiving break. And if you're not American, then I hope that you're just having a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.